What's up, folks? You are tuned into the Failing Frequency. I am Ethan. And I'm Mike. And we like talking about Star Trek. Yeah, and what track are we talking about this week? Uh, this week we got, uh, well, we got just a little bit of Trek news. We got some sad news. We got some happy news. And then mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about this week's episode of Star Trek Picard Series 3, Episode 2. Disengage. Disengage. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's a good title. It is. It's like the amount the of times thing. they say engage in it. So It's, it's like the thing, but yeah. it's dis. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. Dis in that uh, thing. This is. Uh, but before we get into any of that, how you doing, Mike? Yeah, I'm living the dream. I'm living the dream. Another uh, good Trek day and a good Trek week. I've just finished mm -hmm. watching two episodes of The Bad Batch as well. I'm, cool. I'm living on cloud nine. Yeah. It's, touchy, yeah. it's, it's hit and miss, this series of Bad Batch, I reckon. Yeah. Cinematography of it, or, you know, whatever you call cinematography when it's animated, is fantastic, I think. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe a bit dark again, but that's just TV nowadays. But, like, uh, but, I, mean, they're, they're, I don't care about the stories. It's space fascism. It's bound to be dark, man. Yeah. 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 How about yourself? How have you been this uh, week? Good. Grand. Um, I recently just downloaded... Uh, an Elcar's interface for one of my phones. Nice. Um, it's fun. Um, and I also just like like two minutes ago downloaded the latest Star Trek: Strange New Worlds audiobook uh, onto cool. Audible. So you know, if you have, if you like me, have ADHD and you can't read books mm -hmm. uh, because books, nerds, <laughs> books, nerds. Yeah. Um, mm. do that. Yeah, I might get it as well. See if I can use a free Audible credit for it I've or whatever. I've told you, man, you've got it. Like Dune, you've got to do the Dune audiobooks. Yeah, you I'm most the way like, through. Just... I'm most the way through. I just need to power it now. Oh man, yeah. you can like in the time it takes for someone to say it out loud, you can be done. Yeah. One day, if, if I'm still at the same place I, I've been at with June for the last um, month and a half, um, then I'll, I'll just get the audio book and Man, go it, it. Man, like literally, if, if you don't get it done soon, I'm just going to act out the first four Dune books, like the guy in the Dragon movie with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, but... Should we do the Trek News of the Weekend? Yeah, Let's we've go. done the pleasantries. We've yeah. done the pleasantries. Let's get Bloody into it. Pleasant. I'm just gonna drop my, drop my shit, dude. Um, so as always, we get the sad stuff out of the news. Uh, sad stuff mm -hmm. of the news out of the way first. Mm -hmm. um, on February eighteenth, two thousand twenty-three, it was sadly announced that composer of TV and film Gerald Freed had mm -hmm. died at the ripe old age. Of ninety five, ninety five good years runnings. Fun. Good yeah. grief! Mm. Um, notable works include *The Man from Uncle*, *Gilligan's Island*, *Roots*, for which he won an Emmy, mm. and of course, five episodes of uh, the original series of *Star Trek*, uh, including uh, mm. *A Mock Time* and *Shore Leave*. Uh, he did the uh... <laughs> yeah man it's a banger yeah uh, there's a reason why they keep bringing it back um, yeah everyone's yeah. used it yeah Kebla Gubla uh, Futurama Star Trek mm -hmm. Strange New Worlds yep um um yeah man uh but he, also, he also did one of your one of your more favorite songs maybe or yeah man. another song that you really love yeah it's 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 one of those it's a it's a great song i like a i like a light melody you know as much as i like bombastic uh beats i like a i mm. like a, a soft melody um there's one he did for shore leave it's called ruth um Which and I'll play it's in the bit, background here See if you can get like. Uh, maybe I'll, I I'll try just... put us in soft focus. Yeah, man. Just rub some Vaseline on my camera lens. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It really is that song. It it is soft focus, mm. like personified. 
Um, yeah. It's it's you know it's a nice tune. It's 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 happy yet sad. You know, it's mm. got like a, a wistful reverie to it. You know, it's uh, it makes you think of it makes you think about the good old days. You know, yeah. it makes you miss the good old days, but it makes you think. You know. They were good while while they were happening, man. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's a great, it's very, like, a great tune. wistful Western yeah. sort of stuff. Like it would fit into a Western as as Trek was. But yeah, um, he also did a couple of episodes of uh, Lost in Space. Honestly, when you look mm. at his fucking Wikipedia page, right, mm. that man did some fucking work. Yeah. Jesus. See, I, I should go away and try and like listen in for um, stuff he did on stuff in like Lost in Space or um, Man from Uncle. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I have watched a couple of those in the past. Maybe I've skipped over a piece of his music and not even noticed. Probably. Mm. Um, uh, there's a great interview with him on a podcast from a few years ago called I Just Want to Talk About Star Trek uh, with Mike McCafferty. I Just Want to Talk About Star Trek uh, from May 1st, 2017. Oh, my God. I thought it would be from, like, 2014. It feels like so long ago. Yeah. Would it be 90-year-old guy on a podcast? I know, right? That's dedication to (laughs) your craft. he He sounds like a real old dude. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, sad to see you go, Gerald, but God love yeah. you for, for for the work that you put in. Good grief. Mm-hmm. Uh, ah! <sighs> yeah. What else is happening in news, though, that's less ah. sad? Oh, well, in happier news, um, some more nonsense awards and these these are nonsense awards um but but not as you know them mike uh mm. because uh star trek strange new worlds has been nominated for not one but two um awards at the third annual critics choice super awards what's the super awards the super awards uh, is same- this like what what, what was the um audience choice award or whatever it was the flash running is that is this the, that sort of thing for but for tv i tell you what like from what i could so so it's it's by the people that do the critics choice awards but these are the critics mm. choice super awards and oh. um <laughs> a lot of the um pardon me well you'll notice a theme mm. you will you'll notice a theme and i think i've i think i've I think I've caught on to what the theme for the Super Awards is. Um, so we've got Strange New Worlds uh, being nominated for uh, Best Science Fiction slash Fantasy alongside Andor, For All Mankind, House of the Dragon, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, and Stranger Things. And um, our man... It's not going to win that, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Our man, uh, Anson Mount, nominated for Best Actor in a Science Fiction slash Fantasy Series or TV Movie, um, going up against Chupatel Ejiofor, Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. Diego Luna, Adam Scott, and Matt Smith. So I uh, I checked out the, um, the Super Awards mm-hmm. uh, website, and they have awards like Best Superhero Movie. Um, okay. Their best... Uh, let me just get it back up. Their best movie awards include RRR, the new Maverick Great movie. movie. Um, Great movie. The band two yeah. for two at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it really does seem to be like awards for franchises by the Critics' Choice people. So we've got okay. Bullet Train has been nominated for best. Bullet Action Train's movie. not a franchise. No, but Brad Pitt is. Uh, okay, Nicolas yeah. Cage has has been nominated for Best Actor in an Action Movie. Um, Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, and the two stars of RRR as well, Ram Charan and R. N. T. Ramarao Jr. 
Yeah, they were fantastic. Cool. You know, e- easy um, hand it over to them. Yeah, best superhero movie because that's a category. Uh, best mm-hmm. actor in a superhero movie, best actress, best horror movie, best actor in a horror movie. Best science fiction, best actor in science fiction movies, best actor in an action series, limited series, or mm. made for TV movie. Best superhero series. Sounds to me series. just like they're, they're picking up the big box office stuff and, you know, yes. the big constantly watch TV stuff. And they're not yep. going, okay, what, what, you know, The Whale, watched by no one so far <laughs> in the UK because it's not out in the cinema and not out anywhere to watch. Yep. You know, let's nominate that for awards and give it awards, even though no one's watched it. Well, it's, <laughs> uh, well, in the Critics' Choice Awards, it probably would do. Yeah, would do probably really well in something because, like that. Yeah, you know, if you're a if you're a movie critic and a movie nerd, mm. you know, well, you get the DVDs sent to you, and yeah, you have the film, chance to watch them. You know, yeah. film nerd movies, proper mm. film nerd movies. Um, are being sort of overshadowed a lot by these kinds of movies and TV mm. shows. You know, best horror series, limited series, or made-for-TV movie. Chucky, Dharma, The Walking Dead, Wednesday, What We Do in the Shadows. When you said Dharma and The Walking Dead, I was like, Dharma and... Forget about Dharma and Greg. Dharma D- yes, and Dharma, the no, no, it's the spin off <laughs> series, Dharma yeah. and the Walking Dead. It's D- Dharma and the Walking Greg. Um, he's he's dead, but they're still yeah. just such an offbeat couple. Yeah, she's all loosey goosey, and he's a fucking zombie. Um, no, no, yeah. that was the original show. Uh, eh, anyway, Ooh, I fucking got him. Uh, so yeah, if you uh, <laughs> if you are a, a film nerd and you uh, hate um, you know modern film and TV discourse being overshadowed by science fiction and superheroes and Avatar and mm. um, you know all kinds of this, then avoid this, I guess, yeah. because it really does look like the Critics' Choice people have just gone for fuck's sake. If we have to nominate these for anything, can we just make it their own fucking thing? Yeah. Um, but that's it for the news. Um, you know, we're just keeping it light, keeping yep. it, keeping it loose, keeping it light, keeping it funky fresh, so we can move on to the episode nice and quick. Fuck My yeah, favorite, baby. Yeah, uh, yeah man. Uh, so oh. let, let's talk non-spoilers first on um, episode two of Picard. Sure. Disengage. Yeah, man. Ethan, what did you think of it, uh, non-spoilers? I love Wrath of Khan, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's a great film. Um, this this show really did just make me think, oh, I'd love that film. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> So you got that film. I was just like, this is very nemesis to me. Yeah, there's some nemesis. Yeah, there's definitely a a couple of nemesis moments in there. Hell hell Mm. yeah. Um, One thing I thought that was very funny, that's, um, it's, it's, you know, it's the last time on Star Trek, Picard. Yeah. Did you catch the bit where there's, there's like a smash cut where they're talking about like, um, you know, Captain Shaw's like, there is no way we are going into the writing system. And then just five the minutes later, hour, seven yeah. of nine. Welcome to the writing system. Hmm. The writing system. No. Welcome to the writing system, gentlemen. Um, loved no, that. Poor guy. Um, poor guy. He's a fucking thing. Um, yeah. Yes, there is, there is, um, there's some, you know, there are some, there are some top tier moments and some like fucking eye rollers. Yeah. Um uh you know one uh, we've got like two main threads going in mm. this show haven't we? We've got Raffi and we've got Jean-Luc and mm. um you know without Raffi's pretty boring. It's, Spins of wheels. I wouldn't even say that it's it's so much boring as it is like mm. it's it's too much of this. Yeah. Not enough this. It you know? does cut back to it, what, four or five times in the episode, and you're like, only new things happen three of the five times it cuts back to her. You're yeah. like, come on, 
Please do something. Yes, do something. Yeah. Stop, stop this. Um, yeah. You know, she, the the actor, you know, is, mm. you know, they, they sort of, they cut their teeth on like primetime nonsense. And, uh, yeah. you know, you get them doing a soliloquy and it shows. Yeah. Having a bit of mope. Mm -hmm. That character, um, zero evolution from Picard season one, really. Like it, no. in the in the acting of that character. And it's mm -hmm. because they put it back in this stupid situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I what, about, was... what about you? What do, what do you think? Non-spoilers. Non I thought it was generally okay overall. I, I I didn't love it like I I really liked the first one. Um, mm -hmm. I thought there was a lot of, you know, I'm fine with talky talky in in Star Trek, but ideally the talky talky drives the story forward, mm -hmm. and there wasn't much driving the story forward. And the main things that happen in the episode are the two reveals that. You know, I don't even think count as reveals because I guessed one of them before the show started. And I guess the second one, you know, five seconds into the scene that it, you know, last last episode. So it, you know, I'm hoping it was, it's merciful that, that those mysteries aren't being stretched out to being multi-episode things. You know, mm. it's merciful that that isn't happening and it's just resolved in this kind of, yeah, like if if we were <clears throat> if yeah. we were stretching everything out, it would be kind of insufferable. Yeah. Um, it, because... It's what disco would do. It's what disco yeah. would do. Be because it's like it's it's just it's, it's all so obvious. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm um, I'm very glad that um, you know that happened. I thought Shaw was a bit. You, I, I was more on Shaw's side this episode. Um, than yeah. I was last time. Yeah, there was there was you know one or two moments where I thought maybe he's not a total piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's just unwilling to you know put he's his just kind on of the a line prick. for one person. Yeah, he's just he's just kind of a prick. He's not a complete and utter bastard. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So yeah, that I thought it was fine, but it it wasn't anything groundbreaking for me. Hopefully, this is this was like a, a six out of ten maybe, and hopefully mm -hmm. the rest of the season is up from here yeah yeah absolutely yeah i'd say the same like you know it, it, it's an okay episode and, and like i say that you know for me that just comes from being like some really great moments mm. and some really naff moments and it just kind of brings that average yeah. right right to okay mm. yeah i oh, no mind Anyway, should I um, rush through the story so we can actually talk in spoilers? Mm-hmm. Picard, Riker, Jack Crusher, and Bev are stuck on Bev's ship. The bad guy's ship begins transporting uh, or begins tractoring them in, but thankfully Seven has convinced Shaw that he should be a hero who saves heroes, and the Titan warps in and beams them out. The bad guy, guy hails the Titan and is revealed to be Amanda Plummer's Vadik. Uh, she tells the Titan uh, to scan her ship, the Shrike, um, to find out it's full of weapons um, and gives them an hour to hand over Jack Crusher. Shaw takes Jack to the brig because he's got a file of him stealing, smuggling, and being a con man. Uh, but when Picard, Picard talks to Jack, it's all explained away as him being ethically grey uh, to help patients. Jack tries to escape to hand himself over to Vadik to save his mother. Um, but the now resuscitated Bev shoots Picard a look, letting him know that Jack is his son. So Picard stands up to shore and gets the Titan to run away. Meanwhile, <laughs> Raffi uh, is tracking down who did the attack on the Federation Recruitment Center and goes against her handler's orders to chase down a Ferengi called Sneed. Uh, <laughs> Sneed makes Raffi take drugs and gets ready to kill her, but her handler, Wolf, arrives and beheads him. Yeah. <laughs> Episode. <laughs> Bloody That's metal. That was fucking cool as fuck. That fucking yeah. banger at the start, um, Star Child by Baby, it's called. Um, mm. Yeah, so the, the episode opens up with an absolute fucking belter of a tune, and I'll tell you what, man, I've, I've listened to it twice since and yeah that is now like in my songs 
Yeah. Um, Decent song. Decent song. Yeah, man. I'm going to be queuing it up when I'm at work at Wap and Take Leeds, and probably either right before or right after Space Age Wiz Kids. Um, cool. So, yeah. I, I think we need to talk through probably the big mystery. Yes. That isn't a mystery first. Isn't a mystery. Jack Crusher is mm. fucking Picard's son. Lame, yeah. but whatever. We're doing Wrath of Khan. And we take Let's a whole episode to get to him being his son. Yeah, Even man. though Riker is, you know, <laughs> saying, don't you see it? You know, you work out it? the dates. Don't you, see, don't you see what I see? That he yeah. is, he too is British, like you. Yeah. Well, do you think, think he genetically inherited? Do you think he ge- inherited the accent gen- in his genes? Do you think yeah. <laughs> in, in the two weeks earlier thing. Like he even like goes, he's speaking British and goes like, "Ah, oh, mon ami." Ah, oh, like, mon ami. Okay, okay. Like, wait, Incredibly oh. British person speaking French. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, "Oh shit, maybe he was Picard's son. Maybe he's actually just Gambit from the X Men." Yeah. He's like, "Oh, mon ami." <laughs> mon ami, ma chérie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's 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 a whole lot of like, duh. Mm. Picard, like, don't speculate, which is wise, um, you know. But, but also, uh, it's why why aren't they just scanning him, or yeah, why don't totally. they pull the transport records which have his DNA in and say? Absolutely. And I, I have a mini Mike theory that I don't think is right. But what if he's not Bev's son at all? What if he's just a clone of Picard? And that's narratively why they can't scan him to find his DNA. Maybe. Because if they I mean, scanned his DNA in the show, it would say, oh, you're not Bev's son, but you are 100% Picard. Well, if, if he's a clone of Picard, then surely he should be played by Tom Hardy. Well, th- this is, you know, this was my nemesis thought. What if, because the last time we saw Bev really was nemesis what if she Mm -hmm. went looking for more jean-luc clones and found this little kid oh maybe that's not a bad shout not a bad it isn't i don't think it's right i don't think it's right at all but i mean you know it would help explain narratively why they don't just fucking scan this person and i mean potentially it could also help explain why this 34 year old man um Mm. is is being like i'm sorry but like they call him boy yeah. Twice, and they call him Kid twice. And I yeah. looked it up, like, Riker calls him Kid, and I immediately Googled it, and that man is five years older than he was when he became first officer aboard the really? USS Enterprise. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, the boy. Find the boy. The boy. What, which, what boy? Are you talking about this man's son? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's fucking Who's stupid. clearly his son? <laughs> like it's fucking mental. Um, yeah, I did. I did like the uh, the moment when, like, you know, when Bev comes in, and mm. they just they look, and there is just like a moment. That it's like, it's like knowing. she tells she tells him with a look. There's that sense of knowing, like you say, and mm. yeah, like I'm like that is really good. You know, show don't tell. Yeah. Um. He th- then of course he he then tells. Yeah. Um, but because, that's fine. That's you know. the that's the <clears throat> him, you know, saying it's he's informed because if if he just strode around and said no, we're going to save him, then you know maybe some of the audience would think, oh no, he's going to try and save Bev's kid because Bev's looking on and on at him, mm-hmm. you know. So I'm I'm fine with that bit of telling. Yeah. Um, um, and then you know it gives us like a moment of you know like say. Sean not being such a total bastard, where like when he when he yeah. when Picard says he's my son, and he's like, oh, fine, uh, fine. Yeah. He knows we'll... there's no point fighting. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, shields up. Let's fucking get yeah. out of here. Again, the shields should have been up anyway. Mm-hmm. Twice in the episode, they put like he's like shields. They should have been up <laughs> every now and then. They should in a in an episode of Star Trek. Just like say mm. like shields up, and it just cut to the person on ops. Just go, yeah. They've been up. They've been yeah. up the whole time. 
It's like, shields up. Okay. Just pretends to put them up, even though they've already been up for 20 minutes. Just like a real close up on their console where it says like shields up and they go and mime hitting the shields up button, but just like go next to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this, this guy, what's his name? Ed Spielers, Ed mm-hmm. Snellman, whatever his name is. This guy couldn't like s- put on a smoldering look more if he tried because he's either doing charming rogue like talking or he's doing this. It's 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 a particular type of pout. It's yeah. a pout with a slight smile, so it's not just it's he he's so charming like, rogue, isn't he? They yeah. don't they're not willing to negotiate. Mm. Um yeah, man, yeah. charming rogue slash doctor. Charming rogue. Yeah. Yeah. Um what else did I have? I, I really like this line because that when he's being, you know, questioned by Picard in the brig and he's saying, you know, is anyone, you know, who you knew exactly like you knew them 20 years ago? Is anyone the same? Mm. And he says, like, have you planted roots in your vineyard while everyone else moved on? Which pretty much is um, season one and two of Picard, isn't it? Where yep. the whole Starfleet has moved on without him. Yep. Um, and then this this wrinkly, decrepit old man rocks up, yep. <laughs> expecting things to be treated the same. Yeah, man. That's that hmm. uh, That's that character development for your three series in. Yeah. yeah. Learning that same <laughs> lesson over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, i got some questions about the start. So we got this, this yeah. two weeks, two weeks, two weeks ago, a couple of weeks back. It's a fortnight which, ago. Which Jack says they've been hunted and, you know, whatever for, for months. Then was Rangers, then Klingons, then the fucking thing. Yeah. But um, two weeks ago isn't months ago. No. But, like, t- space and time. Um, mm. So, in that flashback, where's Bev? No idea. No where's idea. Bev? Um... I did like that moment when the Fenris Rangers come on board and they're like, are you trying to bribe me? And he's like, that's not a bribe. This mm. is a bribe. This is a bribe. <laughs> that's not a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've played bribey spoony before. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I suppose they've got to leave Bev off that first scene to try and get the audience to think, oh, what if he is just a con man? Mm. But again, yeah. no one in the audience thinks he's a con man. No. No. We've all yeah. seen Wrath of Khan. We all know he's David Marcus. Yeah. Um, one thing that has definitely settled an argument, or not even an argument, but a um solved solved a quandary. These are the Romulan Ale. He said that it is ideal for sterilizing. Which mm. means that that alcohol is no more and no less than 70% alcoholic. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, slightly well, more, the, the slightly stuff less. They, the stuff they sell here. It's 70%. Any, any more, and it, it yeah. actually doesn't, I don't understand how, but if it's 80%, it's, mm. if it's between 80 and 100% alcohol, it actually doesn't kill bacteria as well. Okay. But the the stuff they sell when they do Star Trek wines, whatever, isn't that vodka or gin or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. It's not That's ale. That's fine. It's not it ale. Just, it's, more, it's more for uh, peace of mind if making a cocktail mm. just solidifies that the main ingredient needs to be Ray and Nephew's overproof clear rum. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to sure. know. It's good to know. Hmm. Um, and what what did what do you think he means when he says that uh, some members of um, Starfleet almost prime directed him into an early grave? It's think... just kill, isn't it? That the yeah. writers have tried to yeah, sound smart. Tried to prime direct <laughs> me into an early grave. What do you mean yeah. they uh, they tried to not interfere with you until you, you know... died? You know what would have been a better pull 
and it, it would have worked for a lot less audience, but it would have been a better Easter egg, is there is that order, this like general order, whatever, the word is completely destroy the planet, like glass ah. a planet. He should have said that. General order, fuck you up. Yeah. Fuck mm -hmm. these guys. Bang, 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 bang. Um, yeah, that would have been a better Easter egg and a, a better line, but it would have worked for less people. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been better. We could have just been like, uh, could have just, I don't know, just prime directed me into an early grave is just yeah. like stupid. That's mm -hmm. like trying to say a fucking doctor tried to Hippocratic oath me up the arse. <laughs> hey, you've got to have a prostate exam at some point. <laughs> yeah, I'll get around to it. Yeah, yeah. Live on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we got more hints. Uh, we, we skipped over Shaw not being as much of a dick. Um, hmm. We kind of got more hints that maybe there's something in his past. Because Vadaku yeah. pops up, says, you know, it's amazing you're able to function or it's good to see you function or something yeah, like that. Well, yeah, she says, judging by your um, Starfleet medical mm. psychological profile, it's good to see that you are still functional, which made me yeah. think fully functional and programmed in multiple techniques. I imagine that's a line in his um, Starfleet file. Can, <laughs> can still fuck. <laughs> Has multiple different techniques oh, of God. fucking. Oh God! Wait, I was making a joke, but maybe, maybe that's actually what it is. Maybe he's impotent. Yeah. Fuck. Maybe it's like good it does to see happen if you have functional. PTSD from um, being I, maybe at yeah. Wolf Three Five Nine. Yeah, actually, I can't get it up. So fuck you, Vadik. Yeah. Um, ah. He says that there's five hundred souls on the Titan. Yeah. That doesn't seem like a lot, considering how big that ship's supposed to be. Uh, the E, I looked it up. The E was 600 to 700 um, crew. So it's a bit smaller than the E. Is it? It's called the Titan. I know, but, you know, Titan doesn't... I know it means, like, or one of the... If you break out the thesaurus, it means big. But uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, like, that, that was the whole point of, like, the USS Titan, the, the OG one. It's supposed to be, like, big old boy. No, the, the point of the Titan, the first one we knew about, Riker's one, was that it was had lots of different species on. Whereas this this one still has lots of different species on the bridge. But like the Titan one had um what was the woman in the wheelchair from DS9? It had it was set up for people like that. It was set up for, you know, set up for all oh, so different it's got races big and species. Yeah, presumably. Big hallways, well, floaty, big floaty, floaty <laughs> gravity. Um, but right. yeah, that, that was one of the points of, of the Titan rather than it was a massive ship. Ah, it's just massive okay. compared to... Well, I was going to say just, it's massive it's compared to Lodak. It's just wheelchair accessible. Yeah. It's like the disabled lose. Mm. You've got loads of room to run around in. The USS Titan is one disabled Lou. It, it's it's one large disabled Lou. You can you can pop a squat wherever you want. Yeah, man. That's why it's all white clean. Like fair enough. Mm. Fair enough. That makes sense. Then I guess. Yeah. Um. I bet. Uh, I bet that's interesting. I bet that's an yeah. interesting work day. <laughs> yeah, mm. but they. I, I'm I'm still saying, and I ca I can't remember because I haven't gone back and watched again. Um, our last week, the constellation in the credits that blew up on Wolf Three Five Nine. That's got to be Shaw's ship or like yeah. family of Shaw or mm -hmm. someone like that. It's yeah. just got to be, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's definitely got something stuck in his craw about about Borg. And he's yeah. he's still he's still a real dick to seven of nine, mm. um, especially like when she goads like goads him in. You know, you want to be the hero of heroes, not the you know guy who legends. Yeah, and he decides to do it. You know, he he goes along with it, and then he gets trapped, and he's like, "I'm I'm you. How dare you, seven? 
for telling me to do this. And it's like, yeah, take some responsibility for your own actions, mate. You know, <laughs> you're mm-hmm. a, you're a grown boy. You're a captain. Let, let well, do this. he's 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 um like he is a douchebag. Um, yeah. But you know, like you're saying, he's he's kind of he's kind of found himself in this situation where like he was just mm. kind of chilling out. He's chilling. He's having dinner. Yeah. Suddenly Picard and Riker come onto their ship and he's just like, okay, I mean, I have to let you on, so okay then. Mm. And then while he's away fucking doing whatever, all this other shit, every time he turns his back, someone's getting up to some fucking nonsense. Yeah. Um, he should so, not leave the bridge from now on, really. No, I mean, to be honest, no, he shouldn't. He yeah. shouldn't have in the first place. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And especially, you know, you can understand him where he doesn't have any jurisdiction and he's very between the lines guy and he's not going to risk 500 people against it. an enemy that we find out has a ship that is just one big gun, pretty much. Yeah, man. Mm. Um, yeah, that's fucking badass. Let's talk about fucking Vadik and the yeah. Shrike. Stupid name. Um Stupid name, but the explanation of it because it does get explained by mm-hmm. her. You know, honey bunny. It, it's it's it works enough for. They should have called it know. the honey bunny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man, that was fucking bad ass. Which is like, mm-hmm. but just while you're waiting, I just want to show. I just want to just just one just one little just one little present just before you go, and they just just fucking pelts a ship at them. Yeah. That's cool. If you know, if if these guys are anything to do with what happened at the Starfleet recruitment center, then mm. it's it's showing a a lot of like real outside of the box thinking. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I really uh, I'm loving it. Opening a portal and swallowing up a building and then dropping that building on the people nearby, um, yeah. and uh, and and just fucking. Punting one ship at another. Mm. Genius. So simple, yet so yeah. effective. And it, it made me think back to, you know, this sort of use of a tractor beam isn't completely new for us because I remember Wesley having a tractor beam that pushed stuff instead in maybe season one of TNG. Yeah, so little it's like, one. Yeah, little, like, a handheld real little one. one. Yeah, they, these guys are just like, nah, let's just like throw this. You know, it's fine. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I just, the bit, like, we see a lot more of the, the Titans crew in this episode as well. Mm. And we had that, that one officer who's like listing off all the different weapons that they've got. And then, like, one weapon, one weapon, I don't even know what it is. And like, mm. Captain Vadic's just like, oh, you don't know what it is? I'll yeah. show you what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we got that. We did that, get... that was one of the bits that was very Nemesis to me because, like, when the Scimitar first decloaks in Nemesis, they're just like, "It's got thirty-seven torpedo banks. It's got this. It's oh got that. It's got Thaleron yeah. radiation." What a good pull! Good memory. <laughs> um, it was, and similarly. Hello, Picard. 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 You are on oh, time, Picard. Oh, you're out of time, Picard. Oh, man, maybe <laughs> she's secretly Gambit, too. Yeah. Mon ami. Oh, well, Picard, mon ami. She, she, was, she was fun. She's a fun villain. Yeah. You know, like like we were talking about a little while ago, She's. you can see that she, there's going to be some mustache twirling going on. She mm. seems to thoroughly enjoy the chase when when they run off at the end, um, yeah. which is you know me you know me and my partner were discussing the episode afterward, and there is a um, there is a very clear distinction between camp hmm. and ham, um, yeah. which which I guess would be a good lead in for fucking Raffi. <laughs> Maybe before we get to Rafi, did you think Amanda Plummer was sufficiently menacing if she's the big bad of this season? I don't think she is the big bad of this season. Yeah. No, she's I don't think I don't think she is. She seems 
she comes across as very, um, like, lieutenant y, like, senior lieutenant y. She kind of, like, reminds me mm. of, like, um, like, I don't know, uh, she's like the, she's like the Loki. She's like Jaws or whatever. She's, Loki, yeah. <laughs> she's like the Loki to the Thanos mm. that, that's, that we're gonna, that's gonna come up later, I reckon. Like she yeah. definitely has more of a a, a foot a senior foot soldier vibe about her. Mm. Um, no I can't less, understand why no would she menacing. she would need this portal weapon. You know, yeah. if these two stories are going to join together, which you'd think they w- would, mm-hmm. why is she going to need this portal weapon if she's got the biggest baddest ship in the world? Yeah, um, mm. and if that ship is is literally just like loaded with like attack weapons, like yeah. Is that the kind of ship that would have a portal weapon that can open up a mm. portal like three times the size of the ship? Yeah. Mm. Um, Seems a bit weird, doesn't it? Yeah. No, I, uh, but yeah, wonderful, wonderful villain, absolutely, but not entirely convinced that she's the big bad. No. Same, same. But I, I think she's sufficiently menacing and clearly powerful enough versus this titan reasonably new ship and they're like we need to run yes mm. um i think i i do yeah we'll do the end of the episode i again yeah with the wrath of khan stuff let's go hide in the fucking nebula yeah <laughs> let's i go. can't understand why they couldn't warp out because, because they the have nebula but they warped Same in. Same thing happened in Wrath of Khan. But they warped in. <laughs> yeah, they warped in, but then they got to the nebula. We'll just turn around and warp exactly the same way out. It can't um, be any quicker than flying into the nebula, which they did. Or it can't be any slower. Well, yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of a fun little, like, boop. Mm. And then she's like, ooh, they're running. Let's do a chase! Yay! Um, yeah. But yeah, that was that was some uh, some full on Wrath of Khan shit. Hmm. That's your son, your ex girlfriend who is a doctor, hmm. is here. Let's go hide in the nebula from the bad guy who seems to know you. Yeah, Admiral, yeah. Admiral, Ad- Admiral, Admiral. Yeah. He, he tasks me. He tasks. <laughs> there was yeah, a little. She just needs a couple of Genesis devices. Yeah, man. There was a, a mention when she's when she, she said one line where she was like, um, "You know, you'll only be able to see me from, shall we say, the hole in your chest." Uh, mm. And it made me think of that line from Moby Dick that. Picard says in first contact font first contact hold on let me see if I can get it right he does um, misquote it in in the film does he? unfortunately does he? yeah, um, yeah. he's like you know were were his were his heart a cannon he would have were his chest a cannon he would have spat his heart out on it hmm. um yeah. yeah there's definitely something going on there hmm. she knows some stuff yep Almost like she's part of, maybe, potentially, maybe part of some kind of hive mind. Some sort of conspiracy. Some kind of fucking conspiracy or some shit. Yeah. We'll do our theories on the end, and I've got an update for that for you. Nice. Yeah. So, But do you want to go on to Rafi, then? Oh, this, yeah. This... Well, one thing, actually, before we go on to um, Rafi, um, mm-hmm. i just seen on trekmovie.com an interview with the actor playing Liam Shaw, who has said um, that his character is going to be sticking around for a while. Yeah. He alludes to he's in all 10, and I can't see how he's in all 10. He's in all 10, but, like, is he is he in all 10 and beyond? Or is, is it going to be a case of, like, because I was saying, like, you know, they're painting him as a massive dick so that when he dies, everyone's like... Hmm. But maybe because we find out he's maybe not that big of a dick, maybe he redeems himself in his death. Hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. We still or think, maybe, I think, maybe both of us little... still think that he's going to die and it's yeah. going to be Captain Seven of the Titan. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah. But maybe he's a, he's a bad moral in the making. Maybe in Star Trek Titan, he's going to be a, a recurring pain in the ass for Captain Seven. 
Yeah. Maybe he could have during this season a pain in the arse when maybe some sort of bug crawls up it. Yeah, or maybe his, you know, his redeeming moment comes from whatever bug is already up his ass gets mm. removed because yeah. he's definitely got something up there. Big yeah. old fucking stick or something. Mm. It's not a bug, it's a stick. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. Let's do fucking Raffi. Yeah, man. Let's go through this worst side of the story. Oh, this, my God, this man. Markaby the worst side of the story. Man, fucking hell, man. Down, down on the fucking oh man this exposition goes to 11 yeah it's just like you told me when you gave me this mission to search for the guys who stole the weapons from From the daystrom institute yeah you wanted me to do this and this and now you're telling me that it's these guys and then the pictures come up on the screen and maybe Mm. this guy and then his picture comes up on the screen (laughs) Yeah, but that's not how I feel, and I'm gonna go talk to my ex about it. His dialogue's gonna be just as fucking clunky. Yeah, his dialogue's gonna remind me of of season one of Picard, where it showed that I had a a son and a, a granddaughter, um, but I wasn't allowed to see them because I was tweaking on drugs. It's gonna just remind me of that. Yeah, man. And like her whole timeline seems to be written post fact. Like and doesn't really line up, so they they say she and the husband were druggies. He got clean, and she left him for Starfleet, which is presumably her leaving for, um, you know, the to serve under Picard in the first place because he got clean for hit their son, so thirty years ago. Yeah, no, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, so she was a druggie who got clean, got into Starfleet, who started believing in a Romulan conspiracy, went on drugs again. Um, stayed on yeah, drugs. Yeah, stayed they on drugs. Broke... They broke... Wait, no. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they were so, together. They were both doing so drugs. They were together. She they stayed on drugs. drugs. She must have already been in Starfleet, though, because people don't just join Starfleet in the in the like people go to the academy she's she must have gone to the who academy the fuck knows man who the fuck knows I, um, I i have no idea about raffi's timeline it's it's very confusing to me and she could she couldn't have been like on drugs for a prolonged period in starfleet no and he does the old like or he says something like you know this is how you get when you start believing in conspiracies you go like down a rabbit hole and have drugs and it's just like, A, that conspiracy was proved right, so, you know, fuck you, guy. And B, how old is this son supposed to be? Because that was only like 14, 15 years ago. Mm. So is her son who has got like, who's now given her a grandchild, like 15 years old? Like, With a five-year-old happening? child. Yeah. He ha- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. We it's don't know that they're human. Timeline. We don't know for a fact that they're human. Uh, yeah, maybe true. he's maybe he's an Ocampa. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, this him being a barman on that planet as well, just coincidentally being on a barman on M- Metalis uh, Prime. I'm just like, God, this is so dumb. This is just another reason to go back to Rafi. Yeah. You know, it's it's you know, as a bartender, um, mm. the the trope of the barman who is also like heavily involved with and knows what's going on yeah it, it's kind of like it's kind of meh, it's kind of meh, because mm. like working in hospitality i could tell you for a fact that you do not necessarily have time while you're at work to be listening in on people's conversations yeah. to be keeping your ear to the fucking street and to be getting involved with shady shit like and, and can I point out as well how this Frangi called Sneed shouldn't have been that hard to find because he's just behind like a beaded curtain. There yeah. isn't like a, a two door system so you don't see him or anything like that. It's just a beaded curtain and then I, I, you can see him from the door. You're like, I'm here to see that person. Okay, he's me like, and him. Uh, 
we're, we're supposed I'm, to chat now. <laughs> I fucking loved Sneed. Sneed was great. I've got the, yeah. need, the need. The need for Sneed. Yeah. Um, Killer that makeup. makeup. Fucking Killer awesome. Killer makeup. Yeah. Holy See, shit. That, that's where I say, compared to Disco, where they did a, yeah. a Ferengi that may or not have been a... Bat. You know, pure bread <laughs> Ferengi or whatever. He I don't want to say pure Ferengi bread. Ferengi yeah. half bat. Yeah. But like... People said at the time, oh, no, they've got to update the style because it would look, like, really cheap. This didn't look cheap at all. You know, no, that looked, that looked fucking that looked awesome. very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did like the moment with um, with with Rafi's husband where he's like, uh, broker just means gangster. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, man, just look at mm. Wall Street. Am I right, folks? Three. Am I oh, right? Satire, satire. Uh, hard hitting stuff and the yeah. failing frequency. Did you did you Bad see minute. Sneed's file? Um, it went past. There was his known associates and his no. like rap sheet. No, and his known associates were Quark, Morn, Brunt, and O'Connor. And that makes sense. I, I think it was like. One of his things on his rap sheet was causing a fire on DS9. So hmm. this guy, he knows all the people. That well, we that know. makes sense. That's you know that'll be why he, for some fucking ungodly reason, was in possession of Cisco's fucking baseball. I don't think that was Cisco's baseball. It'll have been fake. He'll have been sold a fake by Quark. Actually, as yeah. it came out of my mouth, <laughs> as it came out of my mouth, is like, nah, Quark sold him a fake. Hmm. Yeah, because Cisco, Cisco, either has one or two baseballs. He's got the one that everyone signs at "Take mm-hmm. Me Out to the Holodeck," and he's got a different one, and it's not the first one, and it def- definitely didn't have signatures on it. So I'm like, I don't think it's this baseball. Yeah, and man, to be fair, just... there are thousands of fucking baseballs. There are millions of da- baseballs. Yeah. Now, and you can so. just like, like you can you can just picture Quark. Hmm. Like bullshitting him into thinking that it's Cisco's baseball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why not? Hey, why not? Um, we've got a fucking section thirty-one mention. How does how does anyone know about section thirty-one? Did section thirty-one get like publicly outed by Bashir at any point in DS Nine? Um, I think they they've never been of the maybe Enterprise. They haven't been a particularly secretive organization anyway. Um, Because in Discovery, they're just walking around with badges on, like it's nothing. (laughs) Um, In uh, in DS9, they're like, Section 31, explain this, because this is the first time we've had this concept on on Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Um, With Sloan. So maybe... I don't know. I don't know how clandestine it was around DS9 because it seems to be only a Sloan and like two other guy operation. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, but like, you know, it's, you know, stuff like that. It'll be a Sloan and two other guys and then a bunch of other people mm-hmm. that like are probably roped in, you know, yeah. like people that Sloan had dirt on. Or like Bashir was. You know? Yeah. You know, people Rope like Bashir or people. People somewhat like Bashir, but who didn't entirely know who they were working for. Mm. Like, for all we know, Worf is working with Section 31, and Rafi just doesn't know that she's working for Section 31. Yeah. You know? Um, Oh, shit. Worf would fit in that sort of place. Gave that away. Yeah. It's Worf. Oh, my God. No way. (laughs) God. How could we not see this coming? Yeah, that you quote know. was definitely not from the Bible. <laughs> you are a warrior. Yeah, Which you one? Are, that do, one? Don't, don't choose anger. Don't choose yeah. death or whatever. Um, but yeah, Worf comes in and saves the day. Like, the, mm. you know, we were saying last week, like, um, if you're an undercover cop, like, you can't do drugs. I looked this up. Because I don't think this is a thing at all. And from what I can find, they can do drugs if it's going to be one of these gun to your head, 
a cop wouldn't do drugs, um, so I'm going to kill yeah. you if you don't do drugs. Uh, they they can do all that. So the, my first article pointing to me, to, you know, pointing me to it was a UK one, and it was from you know a newspaper, and it was like these cops, you know, went in and did prostitution, and the law that says they can't, you know, engage with prostitutes unless. They've got a gun to their head saying, have you fucked this person? Or, unless, or, or unless they fucking fancy it. Fucking cops are well corrupt. Fuck cops. Yeah, well, Fuck cops. undercover A-cab. cops. Under- A-cab, yeah. mate. <laughs> like... I mean, undercover cops. If you're undercover and it's like, we've brought this prostitute in, have you fucked this prostitute or we'll, we'll kill you? Then they're allowed to. Yeah, okay. And it, by the sounds of it, it's very similar in the US as well from my <laughs> half research. Because, of course, it would be. Otherwise, you'd just go like, are you under undercover cop? Have this bumper coke now, or we'll kill you. Well, yeah, <laughs> in like, that bang. case, then yeah, sound. But I yeah. highly doubt they would probably continue the investigation after. They'd probably get pulled out. Um, but then you've got you to know. find a new cop. Like, imagine yeah. if, like, instead of having a beaded, you know, door into your gangster, you have a, a two door system, and the first door gets you through to a guy, and you've got to do coke in front of him. And then the second door gets you to see the gangster. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Um, but like he yeah. does, it, you know, it, it definitely comes at a time. Obviously, Rafi is in trouble, but mm. like I, it's, it's, I couldn't help but notice that, that Worf comes to save her after she does drugs. Like kind of mm. feels as though Worf has probably been watching her the whole time. Yeah. And no, he doesn't feel like he's been like off planet, does he? No, um, Mm. he's been watching her, and like the second she does drugs, he's like, Right, I'm gonna have to go in because she's off her tits. Yeah, do you reckon Wolf had to go to Raffi's ex husband to find out where this beaded um doll was? No, he'll be, he'll be, (laughs) he'll be what he'll be watching her going, It's the beaded door, it's the yeah, (laughs) where is he? It's the one that very obviously belongs to the Ferengi gangster. Yeah. Who who's been ordering out Umox continuously? Yeah. Umox girls, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah. I really loved the. We got the um, the, the we got like a light motif. The music playing. We got the like it, mm. it was a slight refrain of the Klingon theme from the motion picture that but with some like major notes yeah. um so it's it's slightly more like heroic yeah uh, which was which was fun i really like that that he does um, get a, a full hero scene and the most like violence we've seen in star trek beheading someone i don't think we've Straight ever seen a beheading beheaded him. the second fucking sneed sneed um sneed. turned around i i was just i just i knew he was gonna pull a head out i knew yeah. he was gonna pull a head out of that box uh and his name like the, the other gangster's name that he pulls out was like tuco and i'm like didn't that happen to tuco on like um breaking bad as well who did that happen to on Breaking Bad? It was very similar. They, they should have called like... him. They should have fucking called him Ed. Yeah, <laughs> here he is. Is Ed? Is Ed? <laughs> Ed this and throw it to them. Throw yeah. it to the head. Yeah. Speaking of Ed, is one. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. thoroughly enjoyed that joke I just made. Yeah, but it, it, it's going to be a nice combination of hair and wolf, I think, because. The same way Worf and Martak had that, um, you know, bat- battling one's own ad- inner demons mm. is is the biggest fight of all when Garrick's like crawling into a vent for them. Yeah. You know, he can be like battling your drug addiction is the biggest warrior you'll ever face. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Tarafi. yeah, those those are some of the, the cooler fucking like moments mm. of, of Klingon wisdom. Yes, there is no greater enemy than one's own fears. Yeah. And Worf just, it takes a brave man to face them. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Then uh, let's go back to theories um, because I wanted to, to call out um, yourself for butt bugs, the theory that these are the conspiracy aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, not necessarily from here, but has traction online. 
um, our, our friend Andy sent me through a link that was um, a video Andy. on YouTube of someone. Andy Pulistides of the Great Derelict podcast. Of course. Um, sent through a link, and it was a video of people linking all, you know, the eating of shore to, you know, how the weird aliens ate and the, you know, sounds they made and <laughs> Bev saying don't trust anyone and all that and showing, yeah. Jean-Luc. Jean-Luc, don't trust anyone. So, you know, you're not the only one out there who thinks but bugs. And it's just like, it's 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 just like such a, there it's such a memed, thing you know there's that mm. there's that great meme of of picard and Riker of season one where he's like remember that conspiracy that we found out about about the fucking butt bugs that were that were infiltrating mm. the upper levels of starfleet we told somebody about that right yeah <laughs> like it's just like such a and it said and they said that they were that they'd sent a fucking d- signal out into mm. the deep deep space it's like, ooh, it's Same way the ball loading. did, like you know, <laughs> like and it just it never came back. Yeah, but it's it's just such a glaring loose thread. Yeah, and it would be nice to cut some of the loose threads so we're not wondering in Discovery like are the butt bugs going to come back in the thirty whatever century? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I I wouldn't be against it. These these butt bugs being the main bad guys. Hmm. Mm. There's always chance. There's always chance. Mm-hmm. Um, can you remember? Did I have the theory last week that we're going to see Frontier Day and what we're going to see on Frontier Day? Uh, like a flyover, like a bunch of ships. Did I? Did I say which bunch of ships? Because uh, editing last week, I remade the Frontier Day poster. So yeah, yeah, yeah saw um, that. They're great. I think we're going to see all those ships this season on Frontier Day, escorting the, um, you know, with the flyover of the Enterprise F, escorting mm-hmm. it to its retirement. Mm-hmm. So that would be the NX, the Enterprise, uh, or the Excelsior, the Enterprise A, the Enterprise D, and Voyager. And we know all of those ships are in, like... Um, the fleet museum that Geordie's mm. at. We know the saucer from the D was recovered and they could just put that onto a new engineering hull quite easily. Mm-hmm. And I've extended this theory that I think we're going to see Picard or we're going to see the crew um, on the Enterprise D bridge at the end of the season. Pre- you know, They'll they'll switch their hero ship from the Titan to the D, and they'll defend Frontier Day. They were like back, yeah, back in the thing, and then the shit's gonna go down, and they'll be like, right, you all know where to go, right? Yeah, <laughs> like you know. Hopefully, they don't put Troy on um, on flying again because yeah, she crashes I'll, I'll every time. Just, just like yeah, fucking, they could even get like Jordy back in the. They could have Jordy on. Yeah in the pilot's chair like he was in season one he's like mm-hmm. it's been a while but i still remember how to fly this thing yeah. you know law in data's chair just like yeah. i'm, I didn't I'm even sure think i can i'm sure i can figure it out yeah um fucking crusher will just be like i'll go to sick bay f- for reasons <laughs> for no one <laughs> and, yeah. and troy just be like i'll just sit here i guess yeah we need somewhere for Jack Crusher to sit. Um, he can face the wall. In the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he needs to smolder at the camera. He needs to... He can fucking smolder in his reflection in the touch screen. Yeah, true. So that that's my that's my evolved theory. Yeah, that's a good one. That would be... It would be, you know, it'd be a shame to... to to not yeah. use that opportunity, wouldn't it? We know Geordie's in charge of the Fleet Museum. We know the Enterprise Sorcer- Enterprise D Sorcerer is there. Mm-hmm. I think he'd find like his hobby while being in charge of that museum to connect it to a new hull and yeah. like fix it up. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I could I could definitely see that. I've got some mm. I've got some time to spare. I'm just gonna go tinker with my toy. Yeah. True. True that. True that. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh what but, yeah, I just one last thing before we go. Um we did <laughs> I mentioned earlier we, we saw some we got a little some more interactions of some of the Titan crew. We got some dialogue from some of them. We got that the guy that read off all the weapons. We got the um, mm -hmm. we got that Vulcan officer. Um, yep. Uh, we got uh, we got a few of the rest of them. I feel like we're probably going to um, we're going to see some more of these guys. I think that you know, especially mm. now that we're we're you know we're going into like battle. Yeah. Go, you know, there's definitely going to be some, okay, guys, we're in the nebula. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do? Vulcan, Baldy, what, what's, what are you thinking? You over there, what, what's your, what's your specialty? Yeah. What, what planet are you, what, well, on my planet, this yeah. is what we would do. Um, I, I saw Terry Metalis took to Twitter or whatever, because some people, including maybe Trek movie, were saying, is this a changeling on the bridge? And he came out and said, like, no, it's not a changeling. It's just it's just a different looking species. It's yeah. fine. It's it's a different um, look. They don't none of them look like changelings. One one of them kind of does. Um I'll I'll send you the pick after. Uh -huh. Um But I, I think you're you're right, and they're they're giving these guys a lot of face time and voice time. So I, I think you're possibly, I'm going, I'm leaning more towards your theory that we're going to get a Star Trek Titan with these guys on. Mm -hmm. Hopefully yeah. they lighten up the bloody bridge. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Here, here's a question for you. Was was the, um, were you watched this episode this week completely legally? Of course. Um was it displayed right or was it oversaturated? Because there uh, are reports <laughs> that both um, Paramount Plus and depending on how early you were on, Amazon Prime as well, were highly saturated. Um, um, no, to be honest. So I watched it twice. Yeah. And on one, I watched it on this device. Mm -hmm. Um where the picture quality was not as good, but mm -hmm. um, I could distinguish things a lot more. And yeah. then the second time I watched it on a bigger screen, everything was a lot more dark. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the colors were more defined, but it just kind of, it kind of, it was more like, um, like everything that was dark was basically pitch black. Yeah, uh, and then everything that had color was vibrant. Um, yeah, but I I think I'm that that's, a, if that's they, a combination heard... of 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 settings and screen mm. settings. Okay, because I, I was wondering if they heard like one or two of the complaints from last week, and they did the the best job that they could do in the smallest amount of time of just being like, right, we need to make things less black. Um, turn turn. Down the contrast, turn up the um, colors on it. Turn up the saturation. Because that would have been like mental. Uh, I mean, that's funny. Yeah. I mean, like, surely you would you would think that like they would have they would have done that beforehand after the reception to Strange New Worlds and everyone going, look how colorful it is. It's so wonderful. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it it is super dark. It's crazy it how dark, dark it is. It's darker yeah. than Discovery, and everyone was like, "God, Discovery's dark," and this is like, yeah, this is darker than Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, it's, it's... unlike Discovery, it's the same like color of the bridge, but unlike Discovery, they don't have fires lit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only what reason the Discovery looks has about? any light. Yeah, why is there fire? Oh, it's just yeah. for effect. It, just for a we, we just we like the ambiance, you know. We throw some joysticks in there; it's fine. I I genuinely do think that the in-universe explanation for why there is fire on the bridge is for effect. Yeah. 
done. You can understand it on like a Klingon bridge. It would make mm-hmm. kind of sense there. Yeah, there's a fire lit um, all the time. Yeah, we smoke our meat on it, and the yeah, we, I'm so I can eat at the bridge. Fire. Yeah. What's this? What's this fire for? I like to look at it. Yeah, I like. I li- I'm a. I'm a pyro. Yeah, <laughs> but this is just dark as sin. Yeah. They need to get rid of the slippy, slippy floor. Put on some new lights, and it would look fantastic. Just. But- like fucking seven of nine mm. comes from Voyager, which is you know a bright set. I love yeah. like one of the first things she does as captain is like, can we get the fucking lights turned up in here? Yeah, sure. Just had a real dark personality, and I don't have that. Not I, me, the um, person who was stolen away from their family as a child and um, mm-hmm. assimilated, doesn't have as dark a personality as Shaw. So can we turn the lights up slightly, please? Sure, just doesn't want to look at everyone's fucking stupid faces. Yeah. He's just like, I, get I just the lights it, turned down, then I can hardly see any of you. It's just like you see set photos, because in the set photos, things are a tiny bit lighter, and you can see the red on people's like um, mm. uniforms. In the show, the red is so dark, and the lights are so dark, it just looks like almost completely black, and it just doesn't work for me still. Even with saturation bumping. Yeah. Hmm. But do we have anything else for the episode? Uh, oh, one more thing. I thought it was funny that Jack Crusher knew um, uh, Starfleet protocols regarding prisoner treatment. Clearly not his first yeah. rodeo. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and hey, really, if there's, if there's a device that can break you out, if you know the setting of the force field, then you it probably shouldn't be the law that you have to tell people the force field strength. No, I mean, it's it's about safety. That, that, that makes sense to me. And it makes sense mm. that, you know, someone who regularly commits crimes knows the law. In my yeah. experience, that has always been the case. Yeah. Um, like this, this know. Han Solo knows the law um, yeah. and knows what cells are. So okay. uh, It's that old uh, fucking Dave Chappelle joke, like, you know, Someone's doing something and then someone will just come up like, no, don't do that. That's five to ten. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah. Mm. Right. Then if that's all we've got for the episode, um, if you want to do all the normal thing that people ask, like, subscribe, um, review, whatever, um, depending on where you are, um, then it's just up for us to say, Live long and prosper, motherfuckers. I did that. And peace and long life, double dumbasses.